is up everybody it is alex from heavy new york calling from zoom again and this time we are here with shani of the almighty structural thank you for being here it is great to have you here thank you for having me yeah it's a pleasure to have you here the new album that you're releasing to crown is absolutely awesome i can't wait for the rest of the world to hear it was, was this just a continuation <laughs> off of metacognition or was this meant to sort of be like a new beginning for structural in a way um so uh, i think it's both um so it, the people that uh, were involving in creating this album are slightly different from uh, uh from the previous album because uh, we changed guitar guitar player um so uh the previous uh, metacognition uh, was mainly were was written by me and uh, our previous parents guitar player and uh, now um it's slightly different because it's different uh, people, um, but many of the things are um, in continuation. It's still uh, like a kind of a tech death, melodic death, progressive uh, kind of thing. Um, but I think um, it's more, I, I would say it's a little bit more mature for, for us um because we have learned uh, a few things in the process of writing the first album uh it's more dynamic it's more uh, i think interesting and uh and diverse so uh yeah i think it's a continuation but it's a uh, uh, i think it's more developed uh from the from our first album i definitely would say that there is an evolution uh that's demonstrated on here was there at all like sort of like a preconceived vision of what you wanted this album to sound like or being that you know you brought in new members uh for the band and that you know there was a bit of lineup changes and being that the fact that your sort of technical and melodic death metal sound already has like a very experimental aspect behind it maybe there was like a lot of improvising and a lot of uh not going into it with too much of a vision yeah, so we didn't have much of a vision. Um, um, we basically, I mean, we came, each one of us came with uh, uh, his own influences and uh, it came out to be a continuation uh, of the previous album in some uh, ways because it's still the same influences. But uh, along the way, we we just, created it and uh, it came to be what it is but um i think we always try to keep um our music like a, a little bit like technical and a little bit progressive but uh, still fun to listen to so this is mainly maybe the the vision that we always like keep in mind mm. um yeah but no specific concepts uh, and stuff mm was i was about to ask if there's ever been a time where maybe like a lyrical idea or a lyrical concept can maybe help uh, determine the outcome of the music because i feel like with songs like utopia going into white lily or a track like your damnation going to my grass is greener that maybe um that th there was some sort of conceptual ideas that helped guided uh, the sound um so the way we write the music uh, a lot of the time uh, we first uh, start actually from the music and the, the lyrics come uh, after that. Uh, and we're trying to match uh, lyrics to a uh, song that we think that the, the sound is uh, reflecting what the lyrics are, is trying to say. Um, so, um, it, yeah, it's, it, eventually it's like uh, we try to combine the, the, the sound and the lyrics together, but uh, uh, each other is not, not really coming from from the lyrics. Uh, it's kind of combining them uh, along the way. It's usually start from the, the music first. Mm -hmm. do, on a lyrical aspect, does it uh, do you approach like the lyricism in a way, or like is the lyrics uh, sort of like approach from a very um, personal standpoint in a way? Um, like, could like the lyrics are they being that like does uh, Nadav come to you with a lyrical idea and that maybe. Um, it's coming from his own personal standpoint, or uh, is it more or less kind of like external sources of inspiration that maybe help that influence it? Um, so actually, uh, on this album, uh, it's our, uh, our previous drummer, uh, Vadim, wrote all the lyrics. 
Um, so, uh, and I think the, the influences are very diverse. It's uh, uh, both more more personal. Uh, some songs are, are more uh, personal. Some of them talk about more uh, like um, historical, political, and uh, other uh, subjects. Um, like the last song we've released, uh, and the Earth is Rest is, is uh, very inspired by COVID, by uh, global warming. Um, so it's it's very diverse. Yeah. Well, I've interviewed a lot of bands from uh, Israel, and uh, I actually mentioned this to them because I interviewed Orphan Land, I interviewed Subterranean Masquerade, uh, I interviewed um, a plenty of like so many uh, bands that. Uh, um, that and they all have like different styles like ranging from like progressive metal to death metal to folk metal and whatnot and i've always said like israel seems to be like a waterfall of inspiration because there's spiritual subject matter and historical subject matter that could be addressed there's political subject matter that could be addressed and you know there's all different types of atmospheres and all that and many different types of cultures it almost seems like a a source of inspiration uh it seems like there's is a never lacking yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I've never thought about it like that, but it, it makes sense because um, yeah, the, there's a lot, uh, a lot going on here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, many things can uh, inspire you uh, to write and uh, yeah, to write about many, many subjects. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I interviewed a subterranean masquerade like in early 2021, which that was a difficult time and. Uh, that was a uh, quite unique to say the least. So yeah. yeah. Um, when I listen to the guitar work though, uh, it, I really do like, uh, it almost sounds like studied in a way it, it, cause it really is very technically impressive. I think structural has a lot of riffs and a lot of solos that are just very emotional and very intriguing. Do you have at like a background in theory that's applied to your playing or are you uh, completely on the self-taught side? Um, so, uh, I think, uh, both Tomer and I are, um, uh, we, we, we've learned the uh, theory and, um, we, we know the, this, uh, this, uh, kind of stuff. Uh, I also, when I write, I'm usually following my ears, um, but I have all this knowledge, um, uh, of, you know, scales, intervals, uh, chords and everything. Um, and a lot of the time it helps to uh, write harmonies and uh, layers. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I kind of combining um, combining following my ears with following uh, knowledge about music. Uh, and I guess Tom is doing the similar thing. Um, we also worked a lot uh, with our uh, musical producer, uh, Alon Tamil, which is an awesome guitar player. Uh, and he is also a uh, like very um, educated musician. So uh, we got some influence from him uh, doing things sometimes in a different way because uh, it's harmonically slightly uh, more interesting or uh, like stuff like that so it's it's kind of a combination of both do you find it easier to come up with riffs or different ideas uh when you're more alone in your own element or do you prefer to be the in the company of your bandmates in order to come up with different ideas um so for me i write the best when i'm alone uh, like coming up with ideas it's much easier when i'm just sitting with my guitar and uh, i'm trying to uh, come up with, with riffs, um, but at some points working on, on songs, uh, especially when it comes to a, more of a song that has a structure, so it, it really helps to uh, fit, sit with more people and think together um, what, to, what to do here and there and listen to the, to the parts. Um, and th this is what we did with our producer, we actually um, set together it, it was on zoom because it was uh, COVID, but uh during COVID, but uh we like sat together and uh listened to all the parts and try, try to think together and come up with ideas how to uh, uh how to improve things 
Um, so, but coming up with ideas is uh, something I do much better when I'm alone. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when I interview uh, any band, whether regardless of what instrument they play, they always say it, it always starts off with a riff. It always, a lot of times it starts off with a riff. And this is like a new sort of like a debate I've been liking to have. Do you think we will ever, ever run out of riffs in the, in the world? It's a good question. <laughs> I think when, when, the, when the, this day will come, someone will come up with some, uh, I don't know, way to use microphones or something in, in, in somehow uh, creating more options. But uh, yeah, interesting questions. Yeah, that... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we, I mean, uh, a lot of the time it seems like you hear something but and someone you think you've already heard it but uh, i mean uh, so many things you can still uh yeah well all the greatest uh, all the greatest pop hits use the same four chords right so yeah and they don't sound the same eventually yeah. i don't know how they do it but i think when we run out of riffs just playing completely out of tune is what's going to be popular then that's going to be the new way to to that everything is going to do it yeah, we can. We, we never know. I mean, what the future uh, holds for for music. Mm -hmm. But having two guitar players, because like, do, is it better if like both guitar players are really on the same page in a way, whether it would be on an emotional level or on a technical level when collaborating together, or do you all? Is it better if you all kind of like um have your own ideas and combine them together. It's better to bring differences together than just being continuously on the same page. Um, uh, I think that uh, uh, the good thing is a little bit of combination of, of both. I mean, we need to be on the same page because uh, otherwise it will be very hard to, um, to create things that we are uh, both happy with um but a little bit of difference is uh, very good because we will eventually make more diverse music if we combine uh, different approaches or different uh, influences and who are your influences in a way because like one minute like i i could see so many different like again on a technical level i'm very impressed or one minute i'm hearing like riffs that sound like Chuck Schuldner. I'm hearing riffs that sound like Jeff Loomis. I'm hearing riffs that sound like uh, Tosin Abasi on the solo level. Like it's all just very, um, it's technically impressive, but it's also very diverse in its sound as well. So is it fair to say that there's a lot of different influences for, um, there's a lot of different uh, influences for structural? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, what you said, it's kind of, uh... Our, our influences, like I'm, I'm very influenced by uh, uh, melodic death bands, uh, with like uh, Arch Enemy and uh, Children of Bottom, and also from like more technical, mo modern tech death bands, uh, like The Faceless is one of my favorites, and Revocation, uh, and also all, all the progressive like Animals as Leader, Meshuga, um, yeah, and Tomer is also is very into uh, all the like more genty stuff, periphery, uh, and we we are trying to combine some some of these influence into our music, and also I guess it's a uh, uh, it's just happen when you write. All of our influences are somehow uh, eventually are getting to the music. Um, yeah, but I'm ha I'm happy. It it, it sounds like uh, we have some of these influences. Yeah, well, it seems like melodic death metal and even like the sort of folk metal, which I kind of like almost kind of consider them in a way sister genres but like it almost seems like melodic death metal the progressive death metal is like the most popular type of metal in israel as well like here in in america it's like a lot of modern day hardcore with like code orange and knocked loose a lot of like traditional death metal with cannibal corpse and whatnot but like with the rise of bands like tomorrow's rain for example that has their progressive tone to it uh, Subterranean Masquerade, as I mentioned before, and of course Orphan Land. It almost seems like um, there is a lot of different. Uh, it seems like melodic death metal. My friend, uh, who's in a melodic death metal band, has said he's called Israel Sweden with sand. 
So interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I also uh, there is a very big uh, metal core scene here. Um, but yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of this kind of stuff, and it's quite diverse here, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are also a lot of like uh, thrash metal bands, uh, more extreme metal. If you go on metal archives, the list is like massive, but it's such a small country. Is it? Is it like? Is it very easy for like every band to sort? Of, it has to be a big uh, community, right? And well, because a small country, but a lot of freaking bands. Yeah, actually, I don't know if uh, it's a big scene because it's metal is still a very under, underground honor of music in Israel. Um, uh, but I think a lot of the people in the Israeli metal scene are uh, also musicians that play in bands. Uh, and yeah, there are uh, a ton of bands. Um, and the, the scene is very active, actually. Even though it's, it's very like isolated, um, there's not like a lot of uh, Israeli bands that really uh, break through to out of Israel, but the scene here is very uh, active, even, even though it's not, I think, very big compared to other uh, European countries. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on here in the last, especially in the last uh, few years. Yeah, well, um, I, I was uh, going to mention that, too, because, like, every band that isn't from there but has toured through there has always said it was, like, the craziest shows that they've played. And so it seems like it is uh, very popular in the realm. But I, I'd imagine the isolation, you know, isolation is a great fuel for creativity in some regards, but the isolation has to make it difficult uh, as well, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's really the, the Israeli crowd is, is very passionate i think um that's, I, I think some of it is uh, like uh, because as people we are more uh loud and uh, i don't know uh, more passionate mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i think when bands from out of israel come to come here even it, it's happened more in the last uh, years uh, more and more bands come to uh, perform in israel but it's still not something that happened a lot uh, and uh, if we go back a few years it was uh like 10 years ago it was, it was much uh, less uh, common that bands come to perform in israel so uh, uh people are super happy and the crowd is uh, is very crazy yeah um yep like when i hear bands talk about how hard it is to get out of australia but australia has like so many uh cities to play in from melbourne to sydney perth victoria but uh, a country that's like the size of new jersey that's very isolated i mean you you got jerusalem tel aviv haifa uh but if there's any other cities that can really be explored yeah and actually the the, the the country is so tiny that most of the um the metal scene is concentrated in Tel Aviv and the, all the shows are usually there. Um, and uh, I mean, usually you don't tour inside Israel because uh, all the cities are like one hour drive uh, from, in, from each other. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to to do a tour. Uh, and we actually, we, we also don't really have uh, neighboring countries that we can tour in because uh, Sometimes because of uh, political issues that you can't get to some of the countries or uh, in, in other places that there's not, not much going on in terms of uh, of metal shows. So uh, for metal, Israeli metal bands, usually the best option is to fly to Europe uh, and tour there if we want to. And uh, it makes everything a little bit more complicated and expensive. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Well, then I'm probably asking uh, the final question at the at the worst possible time now. But like, uh, is there any chance that we would love uh, to be able to have uh, structural come to the U.S.? Can we ever see that in the future? And is there just anything else that you would like uh, to promote for the release of The Crown? It's a fantastic album. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, we would love to get to the U.S. Uh, one day. Uh, it it will be more complicated than. Um, uh, touring Europe for sure, 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've been to the US uh, for the first time last month. Oh. So uh, Congrats. yeah, I've been in Florida. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we will do it one day um, for sure. Uh, I hope this, <laughs> this day will be uh, sooner than, uh, than I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we will be very happy to do it. Mm. Well, I think every melodic death metal band from outside of the U.S., their first U.S. show is always on the 70,000 tons of metal uh, cruise. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to bet that that's going to be your first U.S. Uh, show. I'm willing to bet. I hope so, too. <laughs> yeah, it's a hell of a first <laughs> Sounds show. Sounds uh, super cool. Yeah. But thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Structural. Be sure to check out their brand new album, To Crown. It is absolutely awesome. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.